The following podcast is brought to you by Recover It Data Recovery for Windows and Mac and Rogue Coffee Roasters MKE. Use code Broken Silicon to receive 10% off coffee during the holiday season with them. But let's get to the show. Okay, and welcome to Broken Silicon, a PC hardware and gaming podcast. I am joined as semi-weekly always by my co-host, Dan. And so this episode is actually part one in 11 years of being a PC gamer. We'll go through this a bit more in a few minutes, but this channel really started... Uh, with the first big series being about 10 years of being a PC gamer. It's where I pulled up all of the articles, reviews, hardware stuff I remember from every year all the way back to 2009. And I went through it year by year. And, you know, it, it shifted. Like my memory of 2013 and 14 was really, really good. So those kind of each got their own 45 minutes. But then there were some where I'd combine a few years together. And I thought it'd be fun if, you know, at the end of the holiday season, you know, I'll still be doing a video at least a week or a couple of videos here and there, but there might be a week where I want to actually play the games I talk about and maybe get some sleep, take some time off. And so having a series for the end of the year, much like Comedy Bang Bang and some other podcasts do, would be great. And uh, so part two will be Chris and we'll be going mostly through the end of 2018, early 2019. Uh, Paul from non Apple fan and I will go through kind of the second half of 2019. And then me and Cortex will talk about the year in general and what we expect next year. But for part one, me and Dan kind of talking about the lead up to even creating broken silicon. So I guess, uh, let's get into that. We'll have some reader mail questions in here as well, as always. We'll probably come back by, I don't know. We'll see. You never know. You might just get a random episode uh, at the end of December, too. At least by early January, there'll be one. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So what? Uh, let's start here, Dan. What do you... Uh, I think what I want to talk about is kind of us even watching tech tubers because we really got into PC gaming in high school. Or not really. Well, we always had a PC, right? We come from that era where we yeah. remember when we were little, one desktop mm-hmm. that the family shared. Yeah. It's just a, for Age of Empires 2. Rayman. What else did we play? Eventually Mass Effect. I, I got that, that. That ran on the... I, I one. never played that on PC. I played that on like my PS3. Oh, okay. Well, I played it on PC. You remember that, right? Mm-hmm. And I played it on our parents' one desktop when I was in like high school. Which you could run it. Yeah. And so eventually I got a, uh, like a CAD laptop that overheated like crazy <laughs> in 2010. Um, and you know, eventually in college, we really got into PCs. We built our own desktops, but we read a lot more back then. Yeah, I read a lot more back then. I guess, uh, well, in high school when I was really getting into it, uh, I was... Probably bored, so I read a lot <laughs> about yeah. other shit. Yeah, I read a lot more in high school too. I had more free time, frankly, which meant more time to play games, but also more well, time to read. And Tom knows this. Like when I was in college, I was a uh, workaholic, and I would just that hasn't really changed, to yeah, be honest. I would, uh, I would had a full course load, and then I would do like three part time jobs too. So I was mm-hmm. working another like twenty to thirty hours a week. Mm-hmm. which was more than my university allowed, but they never said anything to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I worked more than I was supposed to when I worked uh, in the automotive. Well, in the for one of the big three as well. And uh, they, So yeah, they, in yeah, college, I, me. in college, I kept up to date, but I read a little bit less. I used to give out a lot of hardware advice mm-hmm. because I was Me and Dan were Tom's hardware gurus, graphics card gurus. Yeah, I think at one point I was like number like 50 on Tom's hardware. <laughs> Which it used to be used more. Yeah. It's still used a lot, but it used to be used more. Like this is all the way up until about 2014, the hardware forums on Anantech and Tom's Hardware and Tech Power Up were like 
littered with people. A lot yeah. of that's moved to discords and YouTube now, though. Right? We started watching. When did we even start with tech tubers? I don't know. I, I probably didn't really watch any until maybe a few last years year. ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't keep up. And I mostly just watched like Adored and Linus sometimes, but. Yeah, every now and then you would see a Linus Tech Tips video, I suppose. And I remember I liked TechSpot a lot. Their graphs were well-organized, yeah. very well-written articles, very comprehensive. Like, they wouldn't just benchmark two processors or four. They would do 30. Like 30 yeah. <laughs> they would have all the graphics card you could want. And if they left one out, they would have something close from the same architecture so you could estimate how the performance would be no matter what review they did always balanced they never said any of the crazy stupid shit i would see with like these websites that are like well the 650 ti makes some sense it's like it doesn't make any sense we're talking about a 180 dollar card that 150 dollar card that's half the performance of you know like a card that's just another 50 bucks like you never yeah. saw that on tech spot but i noticed they had videos eventually and that was hardware unboxed yeah Right. And so that's really, I think, where I started to get into it. Okay. Like um, Tech Tubers was that. And I don't even remember when I started watching Adored, probably end of 2017, I want to say. I don't know. I remember I was playing Battlefield 1 when I first started. So that would have been when did Battlefield 1 come out? When did Battlefield 5 come out? I mean, 5. Yeah. So that came out 2018. So yeah. 1? Five. No, 17 is when Battlefield 1 came out. Battlefield 1 came out. Whatever. Yes. <laughs> no, it would have came out in 2016, right? 16? Yeah. It, who cares? Yeah, but so I was probably started watching Adored mid-2018, somewhere around there is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and so that was it, and then I slowly rolled into Gamers Nexus was there. Uh, you know, I, I remember seeing a couple of his articles before I watched his videos, but by the end of 2018, I would say we were mostly watching tech tubers. Yeah. Because a lot of, I mean, we still use WCCF tech, which we still do to an extent, even though you and I criticize it a lot. But yeah, um, some of the stuff mid this year was the laziest written junk I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it got really bad. I don't know. And, it, and yeah. people say that, but it wasn't always bad. No, it wasn't. I mean, maybe we were less critical back at that point in time, but, but we probably you... were. Yeah. But yeah, um, I don't really use any of the big websites anymore at all. I mean, I guess I look at tech spots still sometimes, but yeah, I, I don't use them that much. Many big websites anymore. It's just kind of YouTube and forums, I guess, like on Reddit. But the yeah. Reddit forums can be a shit show too. Yeah. So I and this is where this transition happened, and we're seeing this right now in the podcasting space and other like you, like me and Dan, like Sacred Symbols, which is Colin Moriarty, and he used to be from kind IGN. of. Well, kind of funny. And then from IGN. He was a kind of funny for a few years. Well, he was IGN then kind of funny. Though. Yeah. But what that's what I'm now? saying is you're seeing this splintering off where people are by themselves. And so you saw him split off with some friends to make kind of funny because they realized, as he famously said, I, we realized IGN needed us more than we needed them. And they made much more money just working for themselves, even though they didn't make as much money as IGN. It split among six people or something. You know, and well, then yeah, he split for, off and made his own business where he has like one ed, a couple editors. Yeah, and for years, like IGN, IGN was basically Colin Moriarty, Greg Miller, and what is it, Mitch Dyer or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like and Brian Altano and, and Brian a Altano. Others. Yeah, you know that's what you're seeing now in the tech tuber space. You're seeing these people. Like I remember the Paul's Hardware guy. That was the New Egg guy. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about it. And him. he, I remember in 2011, like looking up videos on how to build a PC, and it was Newegg's tutorials. Yeah. And I just remember last year noticing, oh, he has his own huge YouTube channel. See, everyone's leaving these. Yeah. You don't need these centralized. And that's why that guy that did the Verge build, like he left Verge, so he could he make could make his own. Yeah, because that which we've considered doing a reaction video. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe in December for fun. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> just uh, I know we're late to the party, but man, that Verge video. That Very was, funny. That was so insanely bad. But yeah, so, and um, over time, I started to, I don't know, right? I just started getting, I've been a little bored, to be honest. I'll, I'll say it here at my job, right? Yeah. Like, even though I enjoy it a lot, um, over time, I've just, you know, I, I have to do a million things at once for some reason or I die. And so I started thinking about doing other things. I started doing, like, stand-up a bit here and there. And then I also start, I've been writing for a while. I've like 
10 short stories and two half finished big books that hopefully I'll finish at some point. But then I also started to think about making a YouTube channel. I actually created Moore's Law Has Been Dead mid 2018 and they did nothing with it. <laughs> Basically, just because I could not believe how bad some of the newer tech tubers were. Obviously, not the people I reference all the time, but there yeah. are some where it's like, I mean, The Verge, for instance, that was. In Which The Verge claims sane. to be a tech website, right? I don't I think know. so. There's a I lot of people know. claiming to be a lot of things. Then you just see what they say. And, you know, and so I actually, the first thing I wanted to do is I figured out how to make my MX150 run without throttling, even though it was the eight watt version. And this was a huge godsend. You know, eventually I got a 250 review out a year after I created the YouTube channel. Again, it was called Moore's Law Has Been Dead Then, because again, I thought it was hilarious to even think like, it's dead. No, it's been dead for decades. <laughs> but uh, what I thought is, you know, I never released this video because it's horrible. I thought what we could do is this. I'm not gonna, I was thinking of playing the audio, but or sharing it, but it's like, nah, I don't want to. But what I will do is this. I'm gonna, here, here you go, Dan. I'm handing Dan some headphones. We are next to each other right now. We are still in the clandestine basement operation at our parents' house. That's right. So put that on. All right. Now I'm going to play the video. And Dan, you need to describe it as you're watching it for the listeners. I'll try I to think do this it would be the time. most fun, right? Yeah, I'll try to do it as good as, good as I can. So first of all, we have a thumbnail here, Dan. What do you think of this thumbnail? So you're, <laughs> you're wearing sunglasses. You've got a Batman t-shirt on. I'm pretty sure this is a pair of a pajama t-shirt that you wear a lot a, a batman t-shirt yeah and then you have what looks appears to be a what is that gpu z open with a sad face oh Which yes i didn't see the sad version. face and an arrow was pointing to something i cannot re make out what it says because no, the it's too icon small. is too small but also a glass of wine oh yes the signature glass of wine all right now i'm gonna press play because it's still on YouTube, never released. Maybe someday I'll give it to you guys. The holiday special? Yeah. The regular? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan's immediately there, dying. There's a lot of... There's very, very loud background audio. Um, Tom is talking about uh, lesser-known things in the PC gaming world, and he wants to tell you about the MX-150. So... From a scale of zero to ten, how douchey do I look right you now? You look very douchey. In your <laughs> and I'm wearing sunglasses. Before inside. you get into the video, you want to make sure to take a sip of wine. Yeah. See, I think this is a thing everyone thinks when they make a YouTube channel, there needs to be a gimmick. What I found is there doesn't. <laughs> you just need to make good stuff. Yeah, it looks like you're trying to be fancy in this video, I think. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm gonna level with you. How's the framing? The framing is really low. It's looking uh, straight up at me. Looking straight up at you. So you see way too much. It's not framed very well. Um, oh, did you record this with a bunch of mining rigs on? Oh, yeah. That's this would have been made mid-2018, the peak of Tom's mining grays, when I had like five rigs littered all over the rooms. Like every room had a mining rig in it. So you're talking about how uh, the MX-150 throttles a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I, I have a hard time talking sometimes while I'm also listening to things. So. Yeah. Any, I mean, what else would you say? There's a fan spinning in the background. Again, it's looking straight up at my face. I'm drinking. I think I actually screw up saying the name of the channel in the first video right out of the gate. Let's skip ahead. Yeah, here. you said Moore's Law is dead. Moore's Law has been dead. And this is to talk about lesser known things. So you can see me pointing in the corner and nothing's popping up because <laughs> so I thought I could. <laughs> Tom is trying to point to a graphic, but <laughs> there's no graphic. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I thought I could just add it later in YouTube. <laughs> nope. I thought that's how that worked. Let's go to the end here. Let's see yeah, I, I, I hope this isn't as disastrous as the first video, but. Yeah. yeah there's my old smartwatch. Hmm. But yeah, so you're uh, you're re describing a lot of things, but like you're not. I, I don't know. You're talking about lower wattage and frequencies, but I don't know what. There, you don't have any graphics or point to anything really. So I'm it's assuming hard to I'm going to add so, <laughs> so much in post on YouTube, which yeah. really is not how that works. Yeah, so it's kind of like when you're 
I, I imagine like, you know, when you explain a video, how to play like a board game, but you don't have any, uh, any graphics or any examples. So you're really just kind of confused about what's going on until you actually see like how the board game is played. That That's kind of what the video is, I think. Well, so we stopped the video. We're not watching it anymore. What are your thoughts, Dan? This is the first time you've seen that. This is a hot reaction live from Dan. Um, so, so because we didn't want to play the entire eight minute video, yeah. we're just staring at it because I have trouble talking and listening to things at the same time, as I just said. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, not very well framed. Uh, your camera is a lot better. Your audio is, is a lot better now. now. It is. Yeah. Some people, some people now, it, I have, I've seen complain about audio. Wow. They would have been, mm -hmm. I think their heads would have exploded. Yeah. Well, what's fun now about the audio too is I actually think the audio is almost perfect. And there might be like one noise in the corner like every podcast, even real movies might have a weird clip noise at one point. And then like they'll say, they'll, they'll like time stamp it. And then you'll just see 10 people reply now and go, sounds fine to me, you idiot. <laughs> and so at least we're to the point now where people will brigade people who complain about <laughs> audio. Unless there's a legitimate problem. And if there is, I usually say it. Which, yeah, I know on my end, there's been problems before. I think I've Lately, mostly had good. them solved. I mean, you have a far more expensive mic than I do. So your audio quality is higher i'm sure but yeah we're, we're trying for you guys I'm, we're trying i'm trying <laughs> but uh yeah so would you say things have improved since then yes i don't know where you shot that did you like it was on the desk my old desk okay because it kind of looked like you were like kneeling on the ground looking down at a camera no okay <laughs> no it was just horrible horrible framing and i could tell that your first video you're you were trying to have a shtick where you're like uh a drinking and hardware guy? I don't... Yeah, I think so. But also, I wear sunglasses <laughs> wear inside. Sunglasses for some reason. <laughs> uh, if you guys think I look like a douchebag or arrogant now, you should have seen this. Yeah. And yet, I was an idiot pointing to nothing. <laughs> Maybe it would have been shared as an example of the biggest <laughs> idiot ever. Which, fairly. Yeah. All right, but now that that's done, eventually I did move into making actually real stuff. And famously, my first video that I uploaded that I had go public actually was a response to a Cortex video where I said that it really, that of course AMD can do whatever they want, but it really doesn't make any sense whatsoever for them to make a GDR6 Vega card. Like, yeah. any sense at all to me. Like, that it was very clear that the fact that they would release an HBM only 14 nanometer, that would have been the time to do GDR6, even if they had to disable more cores and clock it lower to save money or and keep power usage down. That Radeon 7, this is a niche product. If they bring it to consumers, it's not going to be cheap. Like, he also said it might be 500 bucks. I'm like, no. This is How much was the Radeon 7 again? It was like 700, 700 right? Yeah, like, it's not going to be 500. It'll be at least 600. And it probably will be more of a Vega Frontier replacement. And at that point, is anyone really going to be happy? That's not really the card people want. After seeing Turing, I don't think people want something around the same price as a 2080 from AMD is the answer. So I said, for all intents and purposes, I believe AMD is not bringing a consumer Vega. Whatever they bring will not bring prices down. And that's yeah. what happens. That was really my claim to fame. Yeah. And, and I will say this, though. I pulled that video because even though that got me like, 25 subscribers. Ooh. Ooh, I know. And like a few hundred views, Dan. <laughs> um, I rewatched it a few months ago and I was like, I'm all over the place in this video. I, I like, I'm glad that people in the comments seem to get the point I was making. Cause I didn't, <laughs> I remember people saying like interesting decision to put your phone recording you on the side, looking to your side of your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the best angle. And so, yeah, I'd say there are really, if you, you're kind of scrolling through my YouTube channel while we talk, uh, if you really think about it, there are like a few distinct like eras of the YouTube channel. And I think the first one is early junk is well, what the, I've called it. And for the first era for me is Tom created a new YouTube account. So he's just getting the default videos. So like every other day he would just send me a, a bunch of trending puppy videos because... Those would show up on his channel. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so it was a new YouTube account. So you didn't have the decade of the curated stuff that it knew I wanted, which would be like political stuff, podcasts, my favorite comedians, 
Maybe, you know, something from like a late night stuff like SNL skits, Seth Meyers. No, 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 none of that. Just since it's a fresh YouTube account, it would, and now of course it suggests all PC hardware stuff. Yeah. Back then it would just suggest tons of puppy and kitty videos. And so I would send Dan a puppy video every other day. Yeah. A lot of great Pyrenees stuff. But yeah, that was the first era of the channel for for me. <laughs> yeah, that's what, and, and I only put out a video like once every three weeks. It would literally yeah. be, I really wasn't taking it seriously. I was just talking into my phone. I hooked up a mic to the phone. Eventually, I got a camera mount that I put the phone in above my monitor. And that was a big upgrade right there with a little mic. And I mean, I'm thinking of the early junk. Um, the one with Intel benchmarking there, remember the 8700K against the 2700X? And they literally yeah. turned disabled half of the 2700X's cores mm -hmm. for some of the benchmarks and used RAM that was slower. And that was one of my first videos that got like really like 500 views or a thousand. And that was um, the death rattle of a monopoly. <laughs> and I liked the thumbnail. That was pretty good, right? With the, uh, I took the German Battle of the Bulge yeah, map yeah, yeah. and replaced the German positions from World War II with like Zeons and yeah, <laughs> comet and like coffee lake stuff. And then I put AMD stuff around it. I'm like, and it just talked about this is what happens when they have nowhere else to go and they think they can still get away with that. So that was a popular video. Eventually, I released one about Linux, which I still think was a good video. I made really good points about what it would take for a third OS that's Linux based to succeed yeah. with do it yourself market. And of course, it was just brigaded by Linux fanboys, which is funny because they didn't say anything bad about Linux, really. But of course, if I don't say Linux is God's <laughs> gift to mankind, the Linux one, fanboys will freak out. One of my friends from uh, college always made jokes about Linux. He was like, uh, I don't even use Linux. That's too closed of a system for me. I use Arc Linux. I have to, I program the drivers for my mouse because that's, that's the only thing that's open enough for me. Like, I really need to be able to customize everything about it. Yeah. Make sure my mouse works the way I want it to, you know. I'll do it myself. Yeah, I'll do right? it myself. Because I'm not an idiot. I'm a smart person who likes having to compile code for a mouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just made a bunch of Linux people hate us again. Sorry. Again, like, I use Linux. It's fine. But guys, come on. <laughs> but anyways, so there was that video. There was early PlayStation Thoughts videos. It was like my third one. I think I did one while I was hiking with Reese, where I just talked into my phone like this. So these are just my thoughts while I'm walking. Those uh, always look good. Those always age well. And then I did the, I think, second or I think it's the second video you'll find on my channel that's public and not in an unlisted format. I, I almost never, I've only deleted like two videos. So like they're all there if you have the original links pretty much. Um, it was the reality will catch up with Intel, where I'm like, why reviewers still don't seem to get it? Why Intel's still selling well? It's like, don't forget that people didn't think Sandy Bridge was great, that it took Ivy Bridge and Pile Driver to really have everyone finally understand just how in charge Intel was for some reason. Which I think the true realization this time around came with like the 3950 and Threadripper release where everyone was just like, yeah, these are the best processes. Yeah, now. that's a good point. This is, this is the, even the, almost everyone said that type of stuff with the uh, Zen 2 release, but not yeah. quite. And I do see 3950X, you just get like every review saying like, Intel is horrible. Like that's the title of a review. <laughs> Like, and the Threadripper, again, it succeeded. It impresses me, you know. Yeah, I thought that was more impressive. Like, let's say I can't get a 3950X before the end of the year, which who knows by the time this comes out if I have already have one. Uh, but if I can't, and then I wait half a year, and then Threadripper drops in price a few hundred bucks, it's still on the table for me a little bit, apparently, because it games as well, if not better. Like, in yeah, Battlefield which, 5, it games which better, which I play. surprised me about the thread, uh, Threadripper is how well it scales in pretty much every task like it's better at gaming than the 3950 in most circumstances i think but yeah so so yeah that curb amd enthusiasm thing which was really just there to not think that amd is going to be a bargain bin anymore but uh i would say that was a little too over the edge amd is pff, no enthusiasm's there 3950X is more efficient than we expected. Threadripper games better than we expected. Yeah, which I'm just glad to see that not everyone was pissed off about the prices because no. why Why would... why If it would have been 20% worse at gaming like before, they probably would have. 
but now they're yeah. like, oh my god, this is this is just a god CPU. Like, which even Intel's multi-core HEDT chips can't claim to be as good at gaming as their consumer 9900K or even before that 7700K. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just for fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, the twenty-four core Threadripper, abs- the fourteen hundred dollars. That's what the price, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is absolutely justified. So yeah, I, I agree. I'd say now is when reality is finally catching up with Intel. Right up. About now into 2019. And I think Zen 3, again, though, will be the Ivy Bridge situation where it's just like, oh my God, Intel isn't just a year behind, two years, three, four years. They better have something tomorrow or this is <laughs> going to get so, so, so bad. Yeah. And that's what the real thing will be is if they really launch Rocket Lake on 14 nanometer at the end of 2020 or 2021, and then it's another year and Zen 4 comes out right before Rock, like uh, right before Meteor Lake or whatever. Like yeah, that's going to yeah. be, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was the early era. Like that one there, reality will catch up with Intel that got like 5,000 views. And I was like, oh my God. And, um, and so then I would say the next era was 10 years of being a PC gamer, which expired this series as well. That's when I got like in a few weeks, several one hour videos. And a lot of people finally, I noticed for the first time going, dude, I love these videos, make more stuff. And that's when I really started getting out videos every week for the first time, like one or two videos a week, I would say first third of 2019. Yeah. What was your memory of that time period? Like, oh, I guess Tom is a thing. Yeah, I was mostly like cool and I was doing a lot of lab work. So my my memory is, what was I doing in that time? I was uh, doing a lot of Zebrafish founder screening at that time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So... But this led into May, which I would say is the third era of this channel, which again, the eras are going to keep getting longer and longer now. Like it's grown fast. Like you expect if it's does, if it's a decent channel and then it'll just kind of plateau a little and have a slow climb from here on out. But the, the, the next giant boom was the Zen three leak. Yeah. Probably one of your most important videos, at least for your success as a YouTuber. Yeah, and that came from mostly from my analysis. I don't have, like, just so you guys know, Adore TV had a Zen 3 roadmap for months before his video came out. Yeah. Months. And so I had an Xbox person I talked about, about Zen 3, and some people sent me at least links to Microsoft code looking at this. And then I also saw other rumors, like on WikiChip, and then a WikiChip link to SMT4. Mm -hmm. And I connected it on. I actually spent like a week thinking about it and putting together a script of my thoughts. And I was like, oh, well, here it is. I think this is what Zen 3 is. And it seems like, at least for the time, it was mostly correct. And you had Adored come out and plug my channel. And I believe I got like 500 subscribers a day for a week there. Yeah. And that was a huge boom. You had several other channels mention me. You had one channel steal me, my information. Yeah. I <laughs> Use remember. all of the same links I had and then claimed he had and a source. He had an, a secret source. The source was just uh, your script. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which well, I we watched dwell that. on that. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need, I, I think I've shit on that guy before. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so that was, um, That was when things started taking off and I started getting these other videos out. That was famously though, my Zen 3 video had the audio off by half a second and the (laughs) the thing sounded like shit. This is one of my recording softwares. Just is it like a 96 hertz bit rate or something? Maybe less, honestly, maybe 60. Yeah. It does not sound good. I do (laughs) not use that anymore. And that was when you had also the, what Intel should have done. Right after that, two days later, I dropped the Intel should have made like six cores without integrated graphics earlier and like what they should have done to not be destroyed by Zen. And that got tens of thousands of views. Then all these other videos come out and like I started really just rolling all the way into the Intel's bulldozer is here with the 400 watt Xeon. And that got like, you know, it's like at 85,000 views at this point. And uh, yeah, that was the big, big growth area of my channel where I went from in a, like two months, 5,000 to 15,000 viewers or something. Yeah. So yeah, what was, that was weird, wasn't it? To check it every time and just see another thousand there. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, and this leads to the next era when we started Broken Silicon. Like when did, June maybe? I think it was June. Yeah. Yeah. And we've always kind of thought of ourselves, or I have thought of this as kind of being a podcast eventually because me and Dan love podcasters. Yeah. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Like a lot. Me too. Like <laughs> I'll probably listen to several hours of podcasts a day. 
Well, at I least mean, on so, average. So for my job, a lot of some days I'm inside a dark room with a microscope for like four hours and I'm talking to no one. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what else am I going to do other than listen to podcasts? fall asleep because it's very easy to fall asleep in a pitch black room with a microscope. <laughs> and this also when we got into more YouTubers as well, because we didn't we used YouTube when someone sent us a video before, basically, or we needed to look up an SNL skit or something. But it was when I think I started this YouTube channel that we finally discovered your mom's house and H3H3 podcast. Oh, I I had been watching H3H3 for years and I told the told podcast. You, no, I, okay. I, I kind of I, I'd, I, and I'd seen some of their videos. I, I listened to when I uh they had like a guest on like Chris D'Elia or Tom Segura, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, your mom's house, we got into earlier in the year, but yeah, when I realized that Tom Segura is the best comedian. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's pretty good. And he's yeah. not as fat or racist as Burt Kreischer. So that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess that's around that era, but that time when we started getting into more podcasts too. But what did you, what do you remember about me asking you to do the broken silicon? podcast i was like reticent to do it because i just i'm well i'm worried a little bit right now about the recording of it in the future because i'm going to be doing i'm going to be very busy for the next few months probably but well yeah but we've made it pretty clear that we'll make it easier on you if you really do don't have a lot of time what we'll do is one thing we probably should start doing is just sharing google docs mm -hmm. so that you can see ahead of time what i'm adding mm-hmm Perhaps you can just add things on your own and like, you know, just put some thought into where you position it on the script, kind of like I do. And for those who don't know, basically, we, the way the script emerges, is Dan's seen it like in first, second and third formats, uh, third versions where it starts with me just throwing things together. And then he'll get the final version that I moved around the story. So it slowly flows from talking about Intel to AMD to NVIDIA or whatever. Right. Yeah. And like we should, we'll probably do that. So what might happen in 29, uh, 2020, for those who don't know, is I might just do reader mail by myself at the end and an intro in the beginning. And then there'll be 45 minutes of me and Dan talking. Yeah. We'll but I see. do like, I do like the pace we do this at. We promise an episode every two weeks where we go through the news because I don't think it's worth it to do every week. And I can assure you, we would have 45 minute episodes where we're like, there's a leak of a Linux driver and that's the only story. But if we wait two weeks, there's always at least a few big stories. Yeah. Oh, which is also the other thing I'll say, which is kind of funny because uh, when we were younger, I was more of the extrovert and Tom was more of the introvert. Uh, that That's kind of switched over time. Yeah. Um, so I don't like talking that much. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, well, people will note and write into us. Tell us if Dan's OK again. If you want to in the comments, which I remember that in the first Broken Silicon episode, I was like, you're at the end. Let me know if I'm OK. And just a, <laughs> dozens of comments. Dan is. Uh, I love how they just literally said Dan is OK. Dan is OK. Dan is OK. He's OK. Dan's kind of OK. Dan's yeah. OK. Then replying to someone saying that and saying, yeah, Dan's OK. And then reply, he's OK. <laughs> like that was very. But you've become a lot more assertive in this podcast as time goes on. Yeah. People have told me that. And I've noticed. Oh, that's good. I, I, I knew I would get more. Comfortable and you dominated the, the Flat Earther episode. And several other well, episodes. If you get too. me talking about something stupid that I've spent too much time on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that can talk for you'll me. really let loose. Um, that was that was a uh, flat earther was a big thing I did when I was bored over a summer in college, where I just spent probably a month. Mm -hmm. It was a month of my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what did you think about how how so how successful did you think it would be at first or did you think it would just be like a because at first actually we were going to do it every four weeks yeah we're gonna do it like I was we're gonna do like 13 episodes a year i was expecting like i don't know a few a hundred a few hundred to a thousand i guess but now we have easily 1500 to 2000 listens a week every episode even the short ones get like a thousand views and the more the more popular ones get 2,000 view, two to four, 3,000 views now. It's safe to say this is successful. I have several people reaching out to do uh, ads. ads. Yeah. Which again, if you're someone looking to give, if you want, if you have anything to promote, as long as you're not like selling babies on the black market or something, reach out. Uh, if you're selling a product or service that's not a scam, bad. <laughs> yeah. Like a VPN that will give everyone your password. Nord VPN. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's not stuff like that, reach out, you know, and I think uh, this is an untapped resource because I don't think people pay any attention to the 
ads in the YouTube videos, but there's a lot more room to put a few ad reads in the middle of a podcast and I make them pretty funny. Yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, consider that. And so I think anyways, what I'm saying though, is this has become as successful as I would have hoped it would be and that it's exceeded my hopes. (laughs) Yeah. Same. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, and the thing about broken Silicon, this era, you know, that we're kind of still going through now of it is I can do it every week. I cannot have a golden cove bombshell every week, guys. <laughs> but I can always have fun talking to Dan or a guest every week. Yeah, and it allows you to your channel to um, just the news thing. Like every time there's some story that comes out, you have a video about it. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not going to be that guy that just makes a five or ten minute video about one 1650 Super League. Because I'm going to yeah. be honest, guys, I don't care about 1650 Super. And I've noticed my videos that do best, the one consistent thing is I'm really enthusiastic during the video. Yeah. And, and, and the more popular episodes of Broken Silicon tend to be when there's a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> Which, surprise, surprise. Then that's what people look for. So I'm not going to just phone it in. And so that's why it's like, you know, what I can do is commit to a podcast at least every other week and most likely every week. Hey, which if you want to support us. On Patreon, if you support us, if we hit the 384 supporter mark, that is where I commit. Every every week, there will be something dropping in the feed. So far, I haven't committed yet, though. There may be a... You still generally have that because you're you're pretty good at being I'm, able to get at least... I, I don't know if you know this. I'm also a workaholic. Yeah, because you're pretty good at getting at least one guest mm-hmm. other than me every other week. And even when we didn't have one, I was going to do a break week, but then it's like, you know, everyone keeps talking about this NVIDIA paying off TechTubers thing. Dan, you want to just hammer out a 40-minute episode quick? Yeah, which the more I read about it, the more I, I was surprised by that one because I became like more doubtful of it over time, mm-hmm. especially when it became it became accusatory of people that I've always thought highly of and didn't think they would do like hardware unboxed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, I don't yeah, know. That was that one. So that's the thing. And there's been times where there's been leaks about NVIDIA paying people off or maybe even AMD and Intel, certainly Intel sometimes. And we've said, yeah, this looks pretty legit. But this, that one with the boxes in the background, which is what we're talking about. Yeah, sorry. I mean, right away, that seemed like bullshit to me. And then the more we read about it, the more we're just like, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is absolute bullshit. Yeah. And Gamers Nexus and Hardware Box are going to have a field day with this because they're desperate <laughs> to shit on AMD fanboys. Because AMD is yeah. usually right. But yeah. the fanboys act like, you know, there's a conspiracy. So they're usually desperate, to, which is what I would say to Steve. Steve, just... You know, Back it down a little bit. Huh. NVIDIA oh, yeah. does do some stuff sometimes. Yes. Yeah, so I do. get why you want to shit on fanboys, but just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just understand where they're coming from. Are you overwhelmed constantly trying to recover files you clumsily deleted? There has to be a better way! There is a better way, and it's called Recover It. Brought to you by the excellent Wondershare team, who I do recommend in general, Recover It allows you to scan and recover files you thought were deleted forever. It is trusted by 5 million plus data recovery users since 2003 and literally allows you to restore files on pc mac from hard drives usbs sd cards etc go to the link in the description below to support this sponsor i actually went into mechanical engineering to become a gun designer but i found out upon leaving college that most of the design houses are in the deep south i don't really feel like living in rural florida that meant i had to go to detroit and in detroit i work for one of the major three automotive manufacturers there i learned i had to finally start drinking coffee and you know what i shit you not When I first started making coffee, I just used a mixture of instant coffee combined with hot chocolate. 50-50. I didn't need a lot of caffeine back then, and I thought, you know, the hot chocolate makes it good enough. Well, over time, I realized I didn't feel like being fat anymore, so I started to work out, and I started to watch my eating. I went into this thing called a feeding window, where I only can eat for eight hours a day. And you know what's a great hunger suppressant? Coffee. But... It has calories if you put sugar or 
milk in it. So I had to start drinking coffee that wasn't 50-50 instant coffee and hot chocolate. I mean, what was I, five years old? So I started to appreciate the better taste, even if I'm not a coffee person. And one place you can go now to get an excellent coffee taste is Rogue Coffee Roasters. These guys are a small startup based in Milwaukee in the heartland of America that just make good coffee. They have a proprietary infusing process that roasts beans with unique flavors that don't taste artificial. I personally like Basic Bitch because it tastes like a pumpkin latte without the 380 bullshit calories you get at Starbucks. And you know what? They've got other things too. They've got Bordeaux infused coffee beans. They've got Magarabi. I don't know if I said that right, but it's coffee infused with mint and it tastes delicious. And you know what? The holidays are almost here. So reward someone with a gift, the gift of good coffee and the gift of not having to eat in the morning. And you know what? Right now, there is a deal where if you spend over $59, you get free shipping. And that's at RogueCoffeeRoastersMKE.com. And in fact, if you use the code BROKENSILICON, you will get 10% off your order. Go to Rogue Coffee Roasters MKE, use offer code Broken Silicon, and get the gift of good coffee. All right, back to the show. But then, you know, we get to the other era, which I would say was the hot chips era, which is kind of leading into now. Yeah. Where I had a backer who couldn't make it to hot chips send me there. And I think I got a lot of good information. I got the least, I, I got the AMD keynote, the only person with the AMD keynote for about a week. Oh, yeah. Which even though the quality was terrible, you could understand it and it was fun. Mm-hmm. You know, and I did. That's when I started doing more and more of the live streaming on the road thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the that's what I think. And, you know, that's when I showed up there. I met with people. I had a badge on me that let me in that said Moore's Law is dead. I met Jim Keller and Roger Kadori. That was weird. Supposed to just because, hey, guys, you're just normal people. <laughs> if you can believe it. Surprise. I've, well, yeah, I mean, you meet a lot of smart people and it's like, oh, yeah, they are just normal people, though. <laughs> mm hmm. And then uh, we're into the modern era, which I would say is kind of the consolidation of content era. This is where you start to see it more and more standardized. It's like, here's what it is. Podcast on Tuesday or Wednesday. Die shrink every other week, basically. Uh, although it's really two in a row or three in a row and then a break week. Which the die shrink is funny because you tell me about ones that are about to drop and I'm just like, Oh, we recorded that one a while ago. We're, yeah, we're but then sometimes I drop them a week after we record them. Yeah, yeah. I curate the order on the, purpose. The flat earther one isn't time sensitive. <laughs> no, and I and I knew that'd be a fun one to have a big one on Thanksgiving because you know I was guessing there'd be less content this week, which unfortunately I've only been able to put out a two-hour live stream, two podcasts, and a video on Friday, so only four pieces yeah. of content this yeah, week yeah. which is funny i keep saying i'm gonna like i say i'll take a break in december if i have to guess there will still I think probably there was be like one one period where it was like you were like ended a video with like i oh, yeah this week might be a little bit slower or something and then you put, put out like fuck. two 20 minute videos in a 24 hour period yeah <laughs> Yeah, that was the one with the uh, i9 yeah. video a couple weeks ago and then i also put out this giant thread ripper video that was one of my best videos, I think, you know, so it's, it, we'll see, you know, but that I, I commit to it. I always will come up with some video a week, you know, and there will always be a podcast and then probably a die shrink on the weeks where I think the content's a little light. But, you know, the thing is, I, there was one period where I had like four or five videos a week, just hammering out over and over and over and over. And it's not because I felt like I needed to get them out almost ever. I just kept having stuff to say, mm-hmm. but yeah, so that's the modern era we're in as I continue yeah. to have a job. That's actually very demanding <laughs> that I do in addition to this. And if uh, we get to the HBM supporter level is what I've called it. That's when I like heavily consider just quitting the job. And, you know, this December is going to be about filing for an LLC, hiring on more people, standardizing pay next year. So that's where we're at. Nice. This is the modern era of Moore's Law is dead. A PC hardware and gaming show. 
but mostly hardware. I mean, pretty clearly that's the niche. Yeah, but we, we're not afraid to talk about consoles and gaming. At, and every once in a while, we yell about a game we're excited about. Yeah, like right now, it's Death Stranding. Play Death Stranding if you have a PS4. <laughs> it's uh, better than I expected. It's, it's really good. Also, the best looking game I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, so I think the last thing to say before we get to a little bit of reader mail is, what do you expect next year? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Uh, I think we'll see. I don't know how you feel about this, but do you think they're just not going to ever have a the quote unquote big Navi on the 5000 series. Like, I feel like there's a chance they might just rebrand. They might just brand whatever comes out next. That's the 6000 series. You know, when it comes to AMD's graphics naming schemes, everything is on the table. <laughs> I feel like the, I feel like the 5000 series is, uh, oddly the they're unveiling a new architecture, but it also seems like a stopgap generation to me. That's not, Oh, you mean the bigger Navi coming? Yeah. Yeah, I know it, it's odd. But it, well, if it really does have both GDR6 and HBM support, I believe it will be big. I think the fact that they're delaying it kind of could mean that this is very big. But it, again, staggered rollouts. We have the 5700 XT, the 5700, the 5500s launching, and the 5300s. Well, both of those are out in OEMs now. Um, we might get what sounds like a 5600 XT that will be like a further cut down Navi 10 for mm-hmm. like 280, mm-hmm. which. You know, I don't know. I think maybe just make the 5700 300 bucks and call it a day. But plus, you still have Vegas selling in the 250 range. So I don't know if they really need, but I don't know. You know, we, we'll see what they do there. And then there's room for at least two tiers higher. Yeah. And I think I, really, I, I don't know if those tiers are going to exist in the 5000 series. I think they should. They, I agree, but. Like, and I think if they want to refresh the 5700, which they've hinted at, they should just, you know, give it faster GDR6, clock it a bit faster, and then call it the 5700 Super. <laughs> call it the 5750 <laughs> XT and the 5750 non XT, which should yeah. be about as strong as the 5700 XT, you know, and then you just refresh it 10% better or something. Mm-hmm. I think that would make sense. Uh, for, I mean, AM, uh, furthermore, with AMD, uh, CPUs, I guess, what do you think? I mean, do you think Zen 3 is? I, I know you think Zen 3 is next year, right? I know it is. Okay. The only <laughs> thing that I, I, makes me not sure is they're, the releases have really long legs for this generation. Like, Zen 3, when did the first Zen 3 CPUs come Zen out? Zen 2. Like, Zen 2, sorry. Yeah, when did the first Zen 2? July, very beginning of July. Yeah, so they're rolling them all out over the course of, what, six months? Which is what I said. One of my first successful videos was, you know, what's the catch with Zen 2? And I said, no, it's going to have Intel clock speeds, which it does, guys, even if it's not 5 gigahertz, 4.7, 4.5 is fine. It's going to have higher clock speeds. It's going to have lower power usage. It's going to be a reasonable price, but it's going to be an insanely staggered rollout. Yeah. And I, I continue seeing. that to keep happening. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Maybe. So I don't know. Zen 3, the roadmap looks like late 2020, which is what I expect. Which is everyone who says, wait, how when can... you say late, do you mean like... August or I mean October. like November or October. Okay. But that's the funny thing is people go, how would 2020? So what it's just coming right after Zen 2? And it's like, well, no, think about it. If if it came out literally end of June, beginning of July, the middle of 2019, coming out in like November 2020 is over a year away. Yes. That's so true. they're like it's and, and the full rollout won't be done until quarter one or two, 2021 which is when they'll start talking about Zen 4. So that's really a year and a half gap, which is enough time. Yeah, They're not a year and moving, a half between right? the beginning and the beginning. I mean, they went from 2017 to 2019. They went from 14 nanometer to 7 nanometers and chiplets in just two years. Yeah. Under two years, I think, technically. A little under two years. Like a month under. Yeah. And exactly. so if they can do that in two years, in a year and a half, they can move to 7 nanometer EUV with a new ARC like that's that's believable to me. Yeah, I, I, and, and that's why I always thought Zen three was going to come sooner than people expected because everyone's like, "Well, there'll be a Zen two plus," and really, there was never supposed to be a Zen plus. That was never on their roadmap, but they realized they could bring some latency tweaks and a higher core count to Threadripper, and they could use twelve nanometer, and it wouldn't be that hard. And, and they had a year to fill the the time the amount of time that they were able to mature their uh, architecture with Zen two was definitely worth waiting to roll out Zen 2. <laughs> like, Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I expect Zen 3 to come 
Look, I, I think I, I've always been very optimistic about Zen 3. It's like, I think it could come sooner than people think. But I think, you know, I think quarter, end of quarter three. Okay. Um, so then with Intel. I mean, Tiger Lake will be cool. I don't know oh. if we'll be good enough to compete with a Zen 2 8 core APU. Because, yeah, what Tiger Lake, that's mostly going to be laptops, right? Yeah, and Nux. Yeah, and Nux. I always forget that those are a thing. Which honestly. is when they say 10 nanometers coming to desktop, they're like, Guys, they probably mean Nux. <laughs> yeah, which maybe next year we'll see like some token launches for DIY mm-hmm. PC builders. But yeah, and so, but I wouldn't completely rule out 10 nanometer coming to desktop with some Halo products. I would not rule yeah. it out. I'm told it's doing better than people expect, but that does not mean great. So I would not rule out anything with Intel. Either way. The point is this, it's going to be behind AMD all of next year. Next year is the year where AMD probably hits their all-time stock price high. Not financial advice. You know, Yeah, that's what I expect. And I expect NVIDIA, I guess the last thing to say, right? NVIDIA is, the, well, I, uh, and then the other is, well, I, I don't think there's that much in other than the, those big three companies. But Well, let's, let's just cover NVIDIA first. I mean, I expect NVIDIA to not have their new generation out, not Ampere, Intel, half Halfway nothing, through the year. And nothing. Oh, and I just received information. Also, this we were talking about Intel. Comment like again, further confirmation. June. Okay. April through June, guys. That's what, what Comment Lake is. What was that? 10, what was that? 10 core 14 nanometer. Okay. Woo. But it looks like it will probably be more efficient than expected. Okay. Like it might have an 80 watt TDP, which of course really means 100 to 120. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it might not be as power hungry. It'll be enough that AMD can't be copy. It will be enough that this 5 gigahertz 10 core should be able to be just below the 3900X. So they'll have to keep prices at a reasonable level. And yeah. And then I guess the final. Well, that's it. That's why I'm worried. <laughs> and then the final company, NVIDIA, I guess what I'm expecting. Late next year, I think. Late quarter three. Yeah, quarter three, better ray tracing. Much better ray tracing, probably 30% higher performance. I don't give a shit. I'm excited for Hopper, though. Hopper? Yeah. The, the multi, multi-GPU multi design? Yeah, yeah Hopper is the one to wait for. And, and, and I just would not buy NVIDIA for any ray tracing. They're going to be brute forcing it with software, like paying every company to use their cards while the consoles are out. And I think that's the big story for next year will be Next gen consoles, which oh. I do think I will do the next gen series in December. That will be my last big series for the end of the year because I have received more information on the PlayStation Five. And okay, and so I don't know when if that series will come out before this podcast goes live or not. But what I'll say here is, um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like yeah, a mm-hmm. high bandwidth cache, Gen Four SSD, one of the faster ones. And I'm it's excited to see whatever uh, AMD has to offer. In next gen consoles with uh, accelerated ray tracing. Yeah. Which I think, again, the future of ray tracing is really going to be for consoles is they can program to the metal. They can program the game specifically for this console. So they won't be stupid. They'll be like mirrors are ray traced. Um, super shiny objects are ray traced. Cantaloupes are not ray traced. Cantaloupes <laughs> will not be ray traced. The blood <laughs> on the ground will probably not be ray traced. Lights will be ray traced. You, you've seen blood before, though, Tom. It reflects like a mirror. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so that, I think that's what we can expect from that. Um, and but yeah, I'll be talking about that much more with Paul and Chris, you know, and Cortex as we move forward. This is mostly talking about the beginnings of the channel with you since this is part one. But before we go, how about some reader mail? Sounds good. All right, so the first reader mail question comes in, and you can write them if you support us on Patreon. Milvin writes, how big of an impact does aging generational differences have on the gaming industry? Is it different if you look at only PC gaming? You know, Generation X grew up with Ataris, Commodore, Segas, NESs. There seems to be a surge in retro gaming. Could it be related to Gen X having their disposable income time rise for their kids leave for college? <laughs> That's an interesting idea. Gen, X or Gen Xers. Are their kids being like sent to born in? Now? Yeah, they would. Yeah, be. our parents are young boomers, so yeah, our parents are the very end of the boomer generation. Yeah, I think literally the last year. Yeah, so, they yeah. cut off. Yeah. So yeah, never mind. Gen Xers would be sending all their kids to school right about um, now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. it's an interesting question. I'm not How sure. Can you keep writing these, Melvin. That was really good. Yeah, I mean, 
Well, let's take this step by step. How what how big of an impact does aging generational difference have on the gaming industry? I think it probably has a big difference, a big uh, I mean effect, right? It has to. Yeah. Um, um I think you're seeing a lot of remasters and stuff like that. Well, that is true. Can... It is kind of a correlation with Gen X. Well, and you can see that with uh shows and movies right now too where you can see a lot mm. of um you can see a lot of people that grew up in the 80s they're just getting to the age now where they can be established as like a director or a writer. Mm-hmm. So they grow up in the 80s. Oh, so you yeah. see a lot of the 80s. That 80s content. resurgence probably comes from that. Yeah, because you see that like, in games too, with like so Far like, Cry Blood Dragon. And- yeah, so you're like born in 75. So if you're 75, that you'd, you're almost 40 now. So mm-hmm. you're just old enough to be actually have a position of power to be like a director or a writer. So I, I would expect that might be the, part yeah, of I the think- cause of the resurgence of retro <laughs> games is those people are aging into being like art directors now. Yeah, you know, I, I think that you're onto something, Melvin, which we used to say your name wrong and call you Mahalman. <laughs> He's Wait, a Gaelic name. Oh, Melvin. Yeah, 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 Gaelic has. In our defense, it seems like Gaelic people cannot Romanize their names very well. <laughs> In our defense. Well, we love you all the same. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the only thing I'll add on to that, too, is I think that is where a lot of this nostalgia for 80s and 90s games are coming from right now. I think that's, I think he's onto something. Yeah, he definitely is. All right. Well, let's move on. Carbon Cry writes in just like you can and says, you could look into the new flight simulator as it uses Azure Cloud to stream in the realistic surroundings. Seems like a different approach to seamless streaming compared to the rumors about the next GTA. Mm, right. The, when, when what he's referencing is the rumors that the next GTA might be a timed PlayStation exclusive because it needs that high bandwidth cache and super fast storage to work well. Oh, yeah. And that it's going to take them time to port it to Xbox and even more time to figure out when it'll be ready for PC. Because, I mean, they don't want to bring it to, P- to PC until everyone's using NVMe drives. And even a slower, and I mean like two gigabyte well, per second, those rumors, NVMe drive might be a third what the PS5 is. If those rumors about GTA 5 are true, which I'm not sure, are those pretty much confirmed by now? I don't think so. I wouldn't okay. say they're confirmed, but I keep hearing little rumbles. But I, I wouldn't say they're confirmed. No. Okay. Because that seems like I, I could see some guy just making this fake bullshit map but <laughs> oh sure or yeah what were you saying uh it, oh i was just asking like just if the map is as big as they say you wouldn't oh i think, think that's confirmed be. okay i'm talking about exclusive to playstation is oh not sorry confirmed. I, I, yeah i i mean I, i'm saying if like the rumors about the map being so huge and expansive are true i could see special hardware almost being necessary for it to run at least at properly. first yeah until it's standard enough on pc that they know they can brute force it as usual yeah um and he says and using cloud to offload game workloads compared to full-on streaming like say you know th- this is something the xbox one they tried marketed to, that's and what didn't they marketed do at all yeah yeah I, I gotta be honest i'm just very skeptical about streaming in general especially as time goes on because in here's well uh, here's the thing it's not that expensive to make the hardware. I know people are paying more for it, but it's not that expensive. We're talking $500 to have supremely superior latency. Yeah. I $500. Know. Look at inflation. That's not as much as it used to be. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm skeptical about it too, just because how... And the people who don't have the money probably don't live in a place with good internet. Yeah. Like when... When is the latency go- not going to be an issue? Like, how much better does infrastructure have to be for latency to not be an issue? And it's like always if, an issue no matter what. Well, yeah, latency is always going to be there. But, like, what if they have enough servers? So if you live in, I don't know, like, <coughs> Madison, Wisconsin. You they can literally ping, have one You can there. ping a server in Madison. or if you That live might in, work a little better. But the problem is, what if you live in, like, uh, I don't know, some s- small town in Iowa? Are they going to ping a server from yeah. Des Moines? Are you going to be pinging a server from Des Moines? And pro gamers be decentralized enough. Pro gamers, hobbyists are always going to want local hardware. So you're getting it's just a really weird niche. That's why I continue to say Stadia success will be predicated on the people who it's not necessarily about money, but it's about time. They don't want to download the game and pay any money, but they would play it for free if it had ads. Yeah, I think that's what they have to carve out in terms of doing a hybrid streaming approach. I don't know. It didn't pan out for Xbox, which I'm curious. You could argue if it wasn't ready, but. I just, I'm just really skeptical about this hybrid streaming approach, especially with how much better hardware is getting. It's some dream that sounds cool, but like almost isn't necessary. Like, I, I don't know. There's all these futuristic things people talk about. Like, wouldn't it be cool if this were true? 
if this, I mean, came to be, but then you, you realize, well, it's just more practical to have the hardware in your house. And there's always things that they are doing with the cloud. They'll do server-side physics if they have the capacity. Yeah. Uh, not always. Battlefield doesn't because I think they decided it would take too much processing power. It would yeah, take too much is, processing power to handle all that. So they have you do it on your side. Yeah, which is why you have those wildly different physics outcomes sometimes in Battlefield. Where they, they make sure for the most part that anything that happens that could affect if you win is the same on everyone's server, but you'll see a body fly in a different direction. Yeah. You know, and they know it just doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. I'm just skeptical of Carbon Crime, but I think there is a world, because there were some rumors about Xbox 2 and how they might have a version where they have like a, a, the same amount of RAM, the same processor, but they stream like, they do some of the compute in the cloud but everything that has to do with latency is done on the local CPU and they have enough RAM for the video memory. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It just sounds hard <laughs> when you could just make the console $50 more and probably do it just as well if you offload a part of it. Or just not offload part of it. Or just not care because no one's going to notice that little extra graphics they get, really. Yeah. That's and <laughs> you're just not doing smooth 60 hertz with any amount of offloading. Except for like some really, really, I mean, like, cause like what, cause then they make the argument, if it's something that's not that important, you can offload that part of it. So you could do lighting, but really you want to walk around and see the lights take an extra second to get there. No, I don't. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical until I see it. Anyways, let's move to a, another reader mail. Dr. Forbin writes in and says, do you recommend any PC cases in white under a hundred dollars? In white? Yeah. I'm going to be honest. The way I've thought of this question is I don't have a Rolodex of PC cases. Yeah, I always just, well, <laughs> I've been using the same one for eight years now. I've switched between a few. Yeah, I should really, I'm probably going to try to upgrade in a year. I mean, uh, get a new case. You do, you do a rolling upgrade still with all your stuff. I've never, I, I, I do too, though. I don't think any of the components that are in my PC are from my original PC. Mm -hmm. I think I'm at that point as well. But there Except was... For maybe a SATA cable. There for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was the... Uh, up until about a year ago, I think I probably did have... One or two years ago, I probably did have some components in there that I... Had since 2012 or something. Yeah. Tw yeah. And I've never fully upgraded my PC. I just mm -hmm. keep adding new components. And switching and, them out. Yeah. So It's I've never gone, like a $2,000 cost at once. It's always like 500 bucks at a time. Yeah, so it, it uh, the only piece that stayed the same is my case, which you can tell. It's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a decent case for the money. It was a rose will. Yeah, um, but you know, when it comes to cases, I don't really like recommending specific ones. Also, if you'll notice, a lot of PC cases are the same metal chassis, and they just put different pieces of plastic on the outside. Yeah, I'm like sure that rose will one that I yeah. have, the uh, Ranger M that chassis used on a lot of uh office pcs which explains oh, why it's that. so compact i see that. and yet it can fit a 13 inch graphics card liquid cooling and you know i don't know i like that case a lot honestly my recommendation is don't get a case that has a that has a hard drive and uh ssd cages that go all the way to the base that's my one Especially with NVMe and M, you know M.2 drives out now. You don't need to take up much room for the drives. Like my friend got... For almost anyone. Like I, I think I've brought this up before, but my friend who got a got one of those for a ATX tower and was almost not able to fit a 7970 into, a, into the case. Yeah. Because of that stupid design flaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean... Uh, what I would say is it just know what to look for. I, I generally recommend Rosewell. For price performance, especially in their thirty to fifty dollar range, I recommend Silverstone and especially Leon Lee a lot. I Leon think Lee they make nice cases. I think they make really good cases. Uh, I, I I feel like if you're paying more for them, you're not just paying for something bigger with lights. Like they, it's actually made out of aluminum. They've actually put a lot of thought into making it only as big yeah. as it needs to be. Because that's the drawback of a lot of those like Rosewell cases that they're usually made of like one millimeter thick steel. I think mm -hmm. which a little flimsy. Yeah, I'll say I just got a Cerberus Slinger, which you custom order them, <laughs> every component, because I was like, this is the case I'm getting for the rest of my life. And it's been worth it. Like, that thing is made out of, it feels sturdy, too. Yeah, it's really nice. You can get that in white, but it's not cheap. 
It's really expensive, you know? Um, and so get that if you want something that'll last forever, as long as you want a micro ATX or ITX case forever, um, which I do. Uh, what I would say is just look for volume and, you know, if you're looking for, I generally recommend micro ATX, but that's kind of dying. So if you're getting an ATX case, just look for it to be as compact as you can make it and look for it to be, you know, no more than eight inches wide and then go back about 15 inches and then only be about 10 inches tall, 12 inches tall. As long as you're yeah. within that, you know, a foot tall, a foot long, a little more than a foot long and like let like less two, than two, two thirds of a foot or less wide. Yeah. It's pretty compact actually. and. You want to look for something that puts some thought into cooling. I know a lot of people, for some reason, don't like the power supply to be mounted on top. But what that allows you to do is pull air up into the power supply and out the back of the top of the case. There's actually a reason they used to do that. And I see a lot of power supply cages on the bottom of a case. And then like the metal will cover it and come down. And so you'll have an intake fan that just goes into the power supply compartment and doesn't cool anything. Or you'll have, again, these cages that make it so you can only have an 11 inch card, even though you have this massive case. Yeah. How insanely dumb is that? Unless yeah. you want to saw part of your case off. Which, Which we've done with do. bread knives before. Bread knives, really good for sawing plastic and sheet metal. <laughs> um, but I think you just got to look for, make sure that there's an intake at the bottom, an intake out the back near the top. And if you can have some that come through the bottom, make sure it's actually going towards stuff. You know, and look for how sturdy it is, too. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think that's, there's just so many cases. I cannot possibly know them all. And I just, and that's, so that's my advice is just get good at knowing what a good case is by, based on Airflow Gamers Next did a bunch of good videos about this. And also, don't be afraid to really click to page 10 on Newegg. Like, really get good with the filters. Filter exactly what you want. Newegg does a good job of making them not a waste of time. And, and yeah. then go to page 10. You'll find a Chinese company that's using a Leon Lee chassis and actually might make something thinner than you expected or something. Yeah. Put some thought into it, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's our general advice. It's more of, I think, how we look for PCs than a specific case I'd recommend because they're all really specific to your needs. Yeah. You know what? That's the last reader mail, Dan. Mm. Year's almost over. This is part one of a four-part series. What do you think, Dan? Any last thoughts about this year? Was this year probably the most exciting year yeah. since like 2013? Yeah, I would think. With the so. 290X and the Titan and Haswell, I think was then. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the most exciting year. Yeah, I would agree. I think next year is going to be maybe not quite as exciting as this year, but still way better than the previous few. Yeah. I think things are after, and I think 2021 is going to be a pretty crazy year. I guess that's all I have to say. I'm pretty tired. Yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying the holiday season. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Well, I hope you guys don't go fuck yourselves. I hope you have a good holiday season. Excellent transition. Goddamn nailed it. Uh, and thanks for listening. We look forward to the rest of the series coming out. I'm sure more videos will be dropping through the holiday season when I find time to make them and get the inspiration. And I bet 2020. The greatest year of Moore's Law is dead yet, and that will be right. the second one. I suspect it will be at least the second greatest year. At least the second greatest yeah. year. Yeah. Maybe the best, though. Who knows? Maybe. It's one of those No two. promises. <laughs> Unless you all support us up there. Just kidding. All, all of you. All of you. All. Every single one. We're getting loopy. All right. Yep. Good night, guys. Good night. Good morning. I, I, bye. Whenever you listen to this. Yeah, I guess. Broken Silicon, a PC hardware and gaming podcast, is predominantly brought to you by me, Tom, of Moore's Law is Dead. You can find all of my content, including videos, articles, and this podcast at www.moreslawsdead.com. And of course, it is also often co-hosted by my brother, Dan. And it is edited by my sound engineer, Gerard Cortez. You can find his contact information at www.moreslawsdead.com. You can also find the contact information of my article editor, Carbon Cry. Now, of course, if you want to keep the show running, I really do hope you rate me 
on your podcasting platform of choice. Share it with your friends. And if you have the money, but only if you do, consider supporting me on Patreon at Moore's Law is Dead. If you do, you get access to the Discord to talk to other enlightening people who work not just at AMD, not just at NVIDIA, but often in the server space and other computing areas that people often overlook. And of course... If you support it, you can get access to reading these people's names that keep the show running. But without further ado, let me give thanks to my greatest supporters. On November 29th, 2019, the following people at the net first 10 gigahertz level are higher. Bootman, Hunter Drake, Dean, Ruckus, Justin Yant, Thomas Rupp, Tomas Baraz, Jesse Blanton, Jordan Betcher, Mohammed Alquari, Matthew Rubacher, Prime Tech TV, Justin Parrish, Zachary Martin, Terrence Herod, Carl Marco, Otter Weissick, Thy Rister, The Ninth Dude, Greg Renegar, John Bible, Daniel Cache, Night Rogue, 77, Mechanical Philosopher, Lebo Kinkilo, Folix, Derek Evans, Matthew McMullen, Christoph Novak, Neil X01, Matt Salem, Aaron Close, Sexy, Scott Show, Frederick Lau, Alexander Delar, Alethros, Telos, Kaiden, Greg T. Wanchuk, Jacob Barber, X Soti, Wani Carebear, Matthew Lane, Paul Jones, Jane Rohner, Rubber Ducks, Nick Neasy, Ali Robertson, Gordon Lamb, Carbon Cry, uh, Larry Hoskins II, and Michael Costa. Thank you for your support, and thank you to Sahara for this music. Mm-hmm.